All right, everyone. Happy New Year's Eve. Uh, it's rather wet and rainy here, so hopefully that means a little bit less of the boom boom during the day. Although our daughter is not afraid of fireworks. I actually thought they were great, which definitely comes from the Hazleton side, I think, of my family specifically. Um, not easily startled. Things that go boom are fun. Guns, fireworks, <laughs> atomic weapons. You know, if Swalwell gets his way, uh, we'll probably get to see that at some point. Used on domestic soil in the United States. Link in the description. Uh, we've got another Twitter files drop. And again, I must reiterate this to the people that are coordinating with Twitter and Elon Musk specifically. Please, when you have these Twitter files threads, you need to have a central place, like maybe an account or something, like at Twitter files or some shit, where people like myself who analyze these things and are interested in these stories can go and access this material directly. This particular release is from a couple of days ago. I didn't even know it existed, uh, to be clear. I can't keep up to date on all of the information if the information's not available. And of course, there are attempts right now to gaslight, to algorithmically hijack, etc. You see a massive wave of damage control right now, especially since the leaks have been damaging enough at this point so that the legacy media has been forced to report on the story. Now, of course, that means they spin it and say, well, it's really nothing, it's nothing we didn't know, it's nothing illegal, there's nothing improper here. Yes, damn right, all of the election misinfo is from the right. There is literally this claim in this thread. I'm going to take you through some of it um, to give you a brief sort of wrapped up analysis. It involves CISA. It involves the Atlanta Council, which has a very unique tie in that yours truly has more anecdotal experience with. Um, we'll, we'll be looking through this. I'm going to read several of these tweets verbatim because they are rather damaging. Thread, hashtag, Twitter files. This is by uh, Ken, uh, uh, Kanakoa the Great um, uh, at Substack.com, uh, independent journalist. Elon Musk slams CISA censorship network as propaganda platform. I mean, again, this is a, a no, not new news to those of us who do content creation, but a lot of people like in mainline society probably didn't even hear of this before. This DHS-backed censorship consortium used 120 analysts to censor millions of social media posts on elections and on COVID. Uh, the DHS outsourced censorship to the Election Integrity Partnership, EIP, comprised of four organizations. Uh, so this is the outsourcing of government censorship to semi-privatized groups that often uh, receive public funding. It's unconstitutional, but we'll get past that. Uh, Stanford Internet Observatory, the University of Washington Center for an Informed Public, misinformed public, trust me, Atlantic Council's Digital Forensic Research Lab, and Graphica. Now, this is very interesting. The Atlantic Council's Digital Forensic Lab, uh, do, you, do you realize that Jared Holt is one of the people that works for them, correct? Um, after leaving Right Wing Watch. He, he got, uh, because of his popularity in the wake of defaming a bunch of big name YouTubers, literally including yourself included. Now, I was the only one, by the way, that gave him enough latitude to contact him, speak with him privately and say, look, your article arguably is defamation. Then he you know, restructured part of it. So I, I dropped from a spreader of hate to adjacent to spreaders of hate, for example, in the article. It was marginally less fucked up. And that really launched his career. So the, the, the shady dude who worked for Right Wing Watch making stink pieces about YouTubers primarily, yes, he was directly involved, it seems, uh, through this CISA-based EIP partnership with the Atlantic Council's forensics, uh, digital forensics uh, research team, uh, literally tied to the Twitter files, at least in the manner of being an employee in one of the groups that it was outsourced to. If you look... The NAACP was involved. There's really no surprise there. I'm surprised I don't see the ADL listed here, to be clear. Then the second tweet, there is uh, an image, and one part of this is especially interesting. I'm sure some people glossed it over in favor of the platforms that are involved because it's more colorful. Facebook, Twitter, Google, uh, TikTok, which is funny because it's Chinese, Reddit, no surprise there, Nextdoor, uh, I think that next one is Discord, and then I have no idea what the last one is. It's like a big red P. It's not parlor. Um, so I'm not sure exactly. Pinterest, maybe? I don't know. Never used it. Under the media header here, we see something funny. This is uh, figure 1.3. Major stakeholder groups that collaborated with the EIP. 
Under media, we did not formalize partnerships with media. So the legacy media was not directly coordinating with them. But we engaged with interested journalists from local and national media organizations. Ah, interesting. So you did partner with the legacy media to promote your censorship. Um, can I ask something? What form other than hit pieces could that have taken? Or, or them making their own social media posts, uh, bringing light to the evil of misinfo on Twitter and Reddit. <laughs> Reddit, where everyone takes everything that they read seriously. Those that do uh, are the real psychophants of society. On the 2020 election, 120 analysts monitored 15 tech platforms. 22 million tweets were labeled as misinformation. Entire misinformation narratives targeted for platform-wide throttling. The EIP claimed every repeat spreader of election misinformation was on the right. Uh, they've got a little uh, table here. Uh, Project Veritas is mentioned explicitly. Donald Trump, of course. Uh, the news now from Fox. Stephen Crowder. Judicial Watch, you know, literally a, an activist group that <laughs> attempts to bring some sort of transparency to the legal process. The GOP War Room. Dr. Shiva Ayadurai is on this list. By the way, I'm tr still trying to get him aboard for an appearance, uh, but time uh, zones are a thing. I, I'll, I'll do it as quickly as I can. Uh, CD Media, One American News Network, no surprise there. Someone called Mr. Obvious is listed as tied for uh, number eight on here. It's very interesting. It's, it's uh, listed by total number of incidents. Then it uh, looks at the YouTube views. Project Veritas way out, by the way, in the lead uh, for incidents and almost 10 million total YouTube views. So this is related to YouTube. This, isn't, th this is partially related to Twitter. They've got the number of tweets listed, but it's also listing YouTube, <laughs> specifically the number of videos and the number of views that they got. Poor CD Media. You uh, made one video and it got 700,000. Uh, you should have worked harder to put out the disinfo. You could have been higher up on the list. The FTO Freedom Report comprehensively details the U.S. government's role in outsourcing censorship to the pu public-private network. Founder Mike Ben Cyber extensively documented the individuals involved in the flow of taxpayer funds, $40 million to domestic censorship. So it's, it's more than the 3.7 or whatever it was spent on Twitter. Forty million dollars went to supposedly private groups, in ta this is taxpayer money, to try to censor law-abiding U.S. citizens for political and, and social purposes. Forty million. So, so, again, now it's an order of magnitude more than we knew before. It's pretty damning. If you look through it also details some of the people uh, that are involved with this particular effort. It also mentions uh, the Red Mirage uh, statement. You'll remember that from Michael Bloomberg in the weeks prior to the 2020 election. Well, on election night there will be a Red Mirage. People think Trump won. But then the mail-in ballots will start coming in. Hint, hint. I know what's going to happen before it actually happened. This is not evidence that anything is awry. No, it's, it's just me speculating. Yeah, I dumped $100 million just into the Florida race there, uh, belatedly fulfilling my promise, but just trust me, you dumb fucks. After all, Michael Bloomberg never told a lie, doesn't own a chunk of the legacy media, and is totally not a political partisan either. Chris Krebs, political bias and his affinity for domestic censorship, he's involved with this, called Trump a national security threat, pleased with the Biden laptop censorship. This was the cover-up of the uh, Hunter Biden laptop, which was also involving these same groups, it seems. Passionately censored uh, COVID and elections, wanted lawyers and doctors disbarred, wanted conservative media bankrupted. Uh, if you mean Fox News, and I, I'd have to begrudgingly agree with him. I'm no fan of uh, bankrupting the independent legacy media. Well, that's not like missing link media, rather. Alex Stamos, a former Facebook exec, is the founder of the EIP Censorship Network and Krebs business partner. Stamos is a member of the CFR, a member of the Aspen Institute, the director of the Stanford Internet Observatory, and he loves censoring his political opponents. In January 2021, Alex Stamos compared over half the Republicans in Congress to ISIS. Yes, again, this is not lopsided uh, in the delivery of the censorship. Kate Starbird is the head of the University of Washington Center for an Informed Public Director and CISA's Disinformation Advisor Subcommittee. U.S. government grants have funded her work on domestic censorship since 2013. 
We are literally paying for the people that are abusing us, uh, using misinformation to label our output disinformation on the internet for entirely political purposes. And that is basically what we're seeing here. They use AI too, that's, that's uh, uh, <laughs> problematic in and of itself. Um, you can go through this, I'm not going to read any more verbatim. Um, but uh, some of it uh, deviates off into just political material. It's clear that uh, uh, Kanakoa here uh, also has a political bias, to be clear. And that's also something else that I wanted to warn people about. When you're analyzing the Twitter files, it is predominantly people who are on the right that are calling out the government for this because they were the ones that faced the brunt of the, of the campaign. That's not invariably the case. Uh, there have been leftists that have been banned. Uh, there's a Jacobin article I'll be talking about later, actually, right now, saying, whoa, whoa, guys, uh, the left may not want to be so dismissive of it. It's full, it's full of the weasel word thing. It's like, well, yeah, I realize that the people that are complaining the most are reprehensible. Yeah, they're all a bunch of sexists and, and transphobes, and, and they hate gay people. And they're, they're all right-wingers. They're missing teeth, suspenders, MAGA hats, etc. I realize that you don't want to stand with them. That's understood. But hey, maybe it's a bad idea to give the government the unilateral power to dispense tax money to supposedly private groups in partnership with the legacy media, which is corporate-based, of course, in order to censor people for political reasons. Hey guys, hey guys, voice in the wilderness here. It could be used against us too. And they act, by the way, like there's virtually no example of this. Lois Lerner's IRS ring a bell? <laughs> it wasn't just conservative groups that were being bombarded and harassed and denied nonprofit status. It came out that fully half the groups were leftoid groups. This happened on Facebook years ago. I tried to warn the goddamn liberals of this. I pointed it out at the time. When you looked at the groups that were being removed, I went through a laundry list of them. They, they had a fucking list on Facebook itself. This is back when Facebook was half usable, before it became the trash pit that it is now. It's, it's, a, it's way worse than any other site you can imagine other than maybe Reddit and usability at this point. Half those groups were like cop block and shit like that. But film the police. Cop, these aren't right-wing groups. They're, they're being recast as right-wing, conveniently uh, timed, by the way, by the legacy media right now, run by a bunch of, like, Bernie fans and shit like that. So, yeah, you can go through this again, link in the description, uh, at your leisure. That's just a brief write-up, though. The groups that are involved are partisan. They're run by partisans. They operated in a partisan framework. They did this using taxpayer money. It's an order of magnitude more than we thought before. It involves much more than Twitter. It involves Google slash YouTube. It involves Facebook. It involves TikTok, apparently, among other groups. This is a prolonged, politically motivated campaign that has flown under the radar for years. It's been warned about by people like me for years, but we were never taken seriously by people who weren't content creators. They don't have any idea about algorithmic deboosting and things like this. If they read on CNN that you're an extremist, they just take it for granted. And if you complain about the fact that, hey, all of a sudden my viewership dropped by 50%, their natural resort is to say, well, you've lost your talent, you've become boring. No, it's not. It's because nobody can find the fucking material. Again, I've claimed it for years. I got called sour grapes for some time for doing so, but I was right. And many others were right as well. This is what has been going on. It needs a full congressional investigation, and it needs to end fucking yesterday. There is no legitimacy to the claim of the government dispensing taxpayer funds to fight disinfo unless it is illegal material. If someone's posting terroristic threats, if somebody is just botting and spamming and it has nothing to do with expression, that's perfectly fine. But these are real, genuine opinions held by U.S. citizens in many cases that are being silenced in part or in whole by its own government. It is blatantly in violation of the First Amendment. I would argue that using taxpayer money to snoop around on these people arguably violates the Fourth Amendment too. That's about all. Peace out.